I want to help Emma Chamberlain out with the issue she's having with her new podcast. She's facing a lot of criticism about the podcast from her audience for various different reasons. My big criticism with the podcast has always been like, I do not think it is the environment for anyone to be pondering and questioning the philosophical meanings of life or just like tropes, whether love exists or not, in their bed by themselves. I'm so glad I'm not the only one who stopped listening to Emma Chamberlain's podcast. Are we starting to see the downfall of Emma Chamberlain? I'm not criticizing her because she's successful, but it seems like she now is trying to still seem so relatable that it's almost coming off as like tone deaf slash immature. Hi, I'm JJ Gat. So I am a content creator, an attorney, and I talk about the creator economy on this channel. So I did several videos on podcasting. I myself was a co-panelist on a WHUR HD radio show, which was also by NDC Radio. It's in syndication right now. I had a blog talk radio podcast with a friend of mine for a couple of seasons. I hosted my own podcast on my blog. It's just a solo podcast. And I've done three videos on this channel about podcasting. One of them, seven things you need to do before you start your podcast, how to market and promote your podcast, and another video on podcasting that I'll put a link down below. So for purposes of this video and help Emma out, I'm going to take three of those points from the seven things to do before you start the podcast that would apply to Emma that would help her and it could also help you if you're thinking about having a, starting a podcast or if you have a podcast and you are challenged in reaching your audience or marketing and the third point that I'm going to make is not really for Emma because she kind of has a reach already but it's for those of you who have podcasts especially YouTube podcasts but they get very little views and very different listens so you want to know what you're doing wrong okay so if you're interested in that stay tuned for this now the reason why Emma Chamberlain is getting a lot of heat for her podcast is that you need to identify the audience. Emma's audience are people who grew up watching her on YouTube, following her journey, maybe buy her coffee and just are inspired and motivated by her. They grew up with Emma. But what happened was a lot of those kids grew up, they're in college now, they're in postgraduate. They've moved on in terms of academically and intellect. Emma talking to them, but without necessarily back up some of the things she's saying is turning them off because they're in an environment in school or with other people, their peers, and they're talking about this very different topics from a more nuanced, from a more intellectual standpoint, and she's not necessarily giving it. And so there's a mismatch there. Now, what she could do is when I say identify your audience, she could take a step back and realize, okay, my audience isn't the people I grew up with. My audience may be the people coming up behind me who are Generation Z. So what can I say to influence, impact the Generation Z people who might know me and heard my name, who might be familiar with my coffee, but um, are still inspired by me. So that's the first thing you need to do if you have a podcast or if you're thinking about a podcast is make sure you're clear who your audience is so your message resonates with them and you're talking directly to their issues, their concerns, things that's affecting their first thing. The second thing, which is the most important thing I think can save Emma Chamberlain's podcast is that is she needs to pick the right format, perhaps pivot. So there's four different types of podcasts. There's lots of different types of podcast formats, but the four that I talk about in my video is then some of them, one of them is which Emma's doing right now, is the podcast when you are just solo talking to your audience about things that you want to talk about. And that's what she does now. That's what I did in my podcast. It's, you know, one minute moments <laughs> or talking to, talking to businesses on my podcast. Second one, which I think may be better for her is if you were part of a community, if it's like a group, they're really popular podcast, um, Seth Rosen, um, their um, Barstool has lots of podcasts. I just discovered a recent one that I'm enjoying with uh, Shannon Sharp and Ocho Cinco and they're in their house and they're doing banter. But in that one, you can have a group of people who have nice personality. You guys bounce off one another and you crack each other up and you're talking about different topics. The reason why that's a great one and maybe great for Emma is because you don't have to carry the weight of the podcast on your own. You have other people and you guys are all sharing it and bringing your personalities to it. The third format is the interview interview style where uh, a creator, uh, a podcaster may just interview different people. The great benefit of that 
similar to the group podcast is that you're not bearing the weight of carrying the entire podcast for the entire episode. You have the person you're interviewing and also you can bring in the audience and fans of your guest to your show when you do the interview format. So that might be something else that Emma can pivot to versus just having the solo talking to the audience in her living room or her chair. Um, content that's not necessarily relatable to her audience. And then a fourth format, which I think is actually what she should pivot all the way to, is the storytelling serialized podcast. The example I gave in my video is Serial, the podcast about um, someone being on trial in Baltimore for uh, kill, for killing a, a girlfriend. So the serialized podcast, when you are talking about, it's sort of like a, a show, when you episodic, when each episode is leading up to um, an element of storytelling. So Emma is well known for her YouTube videos being really great storytelling pieces, being like anthologies of just her life, but told from various different creative perspectives as a young filmmaker, young storyteller. She's excellent at that. So I really do think that she needs to go back to her drawing board and pivot and first have her podcast be that format where she's taking people on a journey and story. It doesn't even have to be about her life. She could just find different things to explore, film it from a video perspective, and then just cut it down and reformat for a podcast. So that's my advice for Emma and for anyone who's thinking about starting a podcast. Now, the final advice for those of you who already have podcasts or starting one out and realize you're not getting a lot of views is the seventh or sixth um, suggestion that I had in my video of seven things to do before you start your podcast is to focus on marketing and promoting and actually put more effort into marketing and promoting and actually also realize that in order for people to see or listen or pay attention to your podcast, they need to know it exists and you need to be marketing the people who are coming on your channel, but not so much the people coming to your channel, but what they say in the podcast that resonates people, any aha moments, any ground baking points, any unpopular opinions, any insights, any pieces of information or resource or knowledge that wasn't known before, that isn't known widely, but that's gonna blow people away, that's talked about in that podcast. Snippets of advice, inspirational tidbits, whatever it is, that's what you need to lead with. And then you need to market and promote to various different platforms and learn the different platforms, learn the different ways to marketing platforms, and then possibly invest in a person like myself who can help you promote your podcast or make sure that it is optimized to get found in search, to make sure your title, your thumbnail, nails, especially if you have a YouTube podcast, is one that's going to catch people in the various different algorithmic feeds and surfaces that podcasts appear on YouTube, on the podcast main page, and browse, and search, and the homepage, the various different places. So if you're interested in work with me, I'll also put a link down to where you can apply to work with me in this video. Anyway, so that's what I want to share with you. Now, if you're interested in the, again, I'm going to put a, the playlist down below. And you can also check other videos I have here on the content creator economy on this channel and subscribe if you're interested and you like this stuff and watch this next video next.